Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be doing an interview question. This is a bit of a silly interview question. Honestly, I think it's a bad one. Um, but I'm going to show you a bunch of creative solutions to this. Uh, this was posted on Reddit and shared on the Discord and we had a bit of back and forth about it. And I figured I'd show you some creative solutions to it as well. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so what this interview question says, let's open up a Python file, is we are to implement a function called f, which takes one value as an integer, it returns an integer, and this function must do the following things. If it gets four, it must return seven. If it gets seven, it must return four. Um, and otherwise it's unspecified. So it could do whatever it wants for, for this. It could launch missiles, it could return none, it could error, etc. Um, but the one catch is that you cannot use if statements. So we have to somehow implement this function that can kind of swap four and seven, uh, but we're not allowed to use if statements. And I thought of a bunch of different ways to solve this, and I'm going to show you a bunch of cool techniques uh, that solve this today. Um, but usually when I'm interviewing and I have a programming interview, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write some small test cases just to make sure that this thing works properly. So um, in this case, we'll you know make make a pi, uh, some PyTest tests here. So we'll assert f of four is equal to seven, and you know we really only have two specified behaviors here, so <laughs> those are the only two that I'm going to bother testing. So f of seven should be four. Um, and if we virtual mvf install pytest, of course, let's um, we'll convert this into a doc string just so that um, silly interview question, <laughs> just so that it uh, has a function body and proper syntax. So we run our test now, you'll see that they both fail, and this is because we have not implemented this properly. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is we're going to implement this in a bunch of different ways. So I'm going to use PyTest to test each of our implementations. PyTest.mark.parameterize f. Um, and we're going to start with our, our very first implementation there. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll rename those as they go. Um, so now if we add more implementations, we can extend this tuple and try each, each and every one of them. Okay, cool. So that's that's our first thing. Not passing. Great. <laughs> now, the first thing that I saw when, when I thought about this problem is it says we can't use if statements. Um, now, I'm going to split hairs a little bit, and that means we can still use ternary expressions. Um, so that, that'll be our first solution to this. So let's do f uh, ternary. We can actually just move this up here because we no longer really care about it being a doc string for this particular function because we're going to make a bunch of different versions of this. And so what I'm going to use is an if expression. It's not an if statement, but it is an if expression. So we can say return for if x is equal to 7 else uh, else 7. So this is kind of an if statement. So if is seven, if if x is 7, we'll get 4. Otherwise, we'll get 7. Um, and you'll see that if we get put into our test down here. F ternary. Um, now, I think this doesn't quite go in the spirit of the problem in that, you know, we are still using an if here, so that's maybe not satisfying this problem. Uh, but we can actually reach back into old school ternary um, and abuse kind of an interesting part about uh, short circuit evaluation in Python. So the and operator in Python, the way you can think about it is uh, it will return the first or the last truthy value uh, if they're all true or the first falsy value. So if you do 5 and 7, uh, you're going to get 7 back. 5 and 7 and 9, you'll get 9 back. Um, so you can kind of use this condition. So we can say, like, you know, let's say x is 4. x equals equals 4 and 7. Um, so that's how you can get this. Uh, and then we can say or 4. <laughs> and so that way, if x is 4, seven now and we evaluate this we get four and if x is four we get seven so this is kind of a, a cheeky way to give an old school ternary and this is what you this is what you used to do before there's ternary like this um, and i actually see this pattern used a lot in javascript of course in javascript you would be using you know ampersand ampersand and pipe pipe instead uh, although javascript also has a first class ternary so um let's do f old ternary, x equals equals 4 and 7 or 4. So f old ternary. 
have old ternary. And actually, I'm going to tap this out so that it's going to be easier for us to add these later. That way I can just copy and paste lines instead of doing it this uh, kind of annoying editing way. Okay, so that should give us our second implementation of this. And you can see we do have that passing there. Uh, the next thing that I thought about here was, okay, maybe like, you know, using ter ternary is a little bit cheaty. Uh, let's instead do this with a dictionary, uh, which makes this a little bit easier to deal with. Um, so let's call this f dictionary, which takes int and int. And we can just have a dictionary that maps the key four to the value seven and the key seven to the value four. So we'll just do return four to seven and seven to four and index that with x and um, add that to actually we are going to do funks equals pytest.mark.parameterize that way i don't have to do this in two places now it's gonna be it's real nice here f dict so then instead of putting that parameterize i can just do at funks and it'll copy that same parameterization to both of these tests down here. Um, cool. So that should. Oops, I don't want to test my home directory. What are you doing there? <laughs> so that'll that'll pass with this. Uh, there's actually kind of a neat shortcut that you can use here. So you don't even need to define a function here. You can just say that f dict is equal to uh, four seven seven four. Oh, we'll call this f dict two uh, dot get item. So this is kind of a, a shortcut here. Uh, <laughs> a nice, nice cheeky one-liner here. It's a bad question, so I think we're okay having bad answers to it. Uh, another one that I saw that was along the same lines of this dictionary uh, option was to represent the input as a list. Uh, F list. And again, using the same uh, kind of trick here with accessing a particular item in the list. Um, so we want to make the fourth item give you seven, and we want to make, or the, the index four give you seven, and the index seven give you four. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this should uh, this should also so basically when you index it with four you'll get seven when you index it with seven you'll get four um, and again like these are undefined for everything else so I'm not really worrying about other inputs here um, so that's another solution to this uh, some other people in my Discord jump to a mathy solution first so I'm going to show you a mathy solution um, so the way that I think about this is if you sum up all the values in a list. Um, and there's only two values, and you subtract one of them, you'll get the other value. And so if we add 4 and 7 together, we get 11. And 11 minus 4 will be 7, and 11 minus 7 will be 4, because they add to each other. Um, so f addition, and we just do 11 minus x as our, as our uh, thing for that. f addition, and that one passes as well. Uh, the next thing that I looked for was some sort of binary magic. Uh, I think there's, if we look at these two numbers in binary, there is actually a, a bit twiddling trick for this one. So if we do bin of four, you'll get one zero zero. Uh, and if we do bin of seven, we get one one one. So you'll notice that they only differ in these last two bits. Um, and those two bits flip between the two. Uh, you can represent bit flips in Python by Oring or, or by XORing. So if we did, if we just want to flip this bit here, um, we can do let's say bin for XOR with OB1, um, and you'll see that we flipped we flipped just this one bit here. Uh, if we want to flip both of those bits, we can do this. And so you'll see if we, you know, bit flip those last two bits, it becomes seven. And if we take seven and bit flip those last two bits, it becomes four. Uh, so we can do another function here, uh, bit flip return x xor ob11 <laughs> this is perhaps one of the, the sillier solutions to this but it does work um, and you can see that these all satisfy those particular things um, oh this is cool it actually tells you the function name um, as part of the parameterization that's neat but anyway, here's a bunch of different solutions to this very silly interview question. I guess I should tell you why I think this is a silly interview question. Um, the main reason that I think this is a, not a great interview question is it doesn't really demonstrate 
programming ability. It really just shows like, can you memorize a bunch of these silly techniques to implement a problem that's you know not so not so interesting? It doesn't it doesn't require any critical thinking. It doesn't really show. It doesn't really communicate to an interviewer that you know what you're doing. Um, like someone someone could just memorize these as trivia and not really you know not really learn or know anything and not be able to demonstrate any knowledge. But anyway, that's uh, that's swapping four and seven. Hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you want to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.